very proud to bring you my research and uh, the results of this research and the solution in regards to free Wi-Fi coverage for daily cities surrounding the Ben Franklin Intermediate School. Um, what I'm going to talk about is how my uh, research evolved from just looking at what free Wi-Fi was in the daily city area and how it evolved into bringing cheap internet into the household and also uh, bringing cheap computers into the household as well and gathering those resources for the school site. Uh, so I'm going to frame this by looking at housing data from uh, the surrounding area because it does explain a lot about the students that go there. Um, daily, on one side of Ben Franklin, you have households that uh, range from 650 to a million dollars and they're already and they're generated by the uh, market. On the other side you have multi-story, multi-family apartment complexes um, that generally seem to end up housing a lot of the students that go there. A lot of these families, young families that send their children to Ben Franklin um, really do fall by the median income which is about $102,000 and if you do the math between six hundred and fifty thousand to a million dollars, and you look at the median income, uh, it's very likely that these families are not going to be able to afford to buy a house in this area. In fact, when I did know this anecdotally and qualitatively, when I talked to the students, if they did live in a house, they were renting it. Daly City is pretty much a suburb that was created after World War II, and a lot of these houses have been passed down to generations to their um, to their ancestors, not ancestors, to the people that came after them. And these families usually rent these houses. This is further supported by uh, CASP data that I got from their website for 2014 2015 that explained that um, of the students, 60% are socioeconomically disadvantaged. And so it kind of proves, God bless you, it explains the fact that these families are um, they're living in these apartments. Generally, they're just trying to make ends meet, pay their rent, which is linked to the housing prices around them, and the effects of the gentrification of San Francisco. What this means is that Jefferson Elementary School District has decided to invest about $1.5 million into the infrastructure to help students um, get access to technology. And so they've bought 700 iPads for TK to 1 teachers, and they bought about 2,300 Chromebooks for two, second grade through eighth grade. Uh, ben Franklin themselves has about six carts with 30 to 36 Chromebooks in them. What they also have done is they've um, brought, they paid for three new positions called tech integration specialists. I'm one of them. And what our, my job is, and my colleague's job, is to integrate the technology into the classroom. So this gives me a kind of an understanding of what they're doing and how this impacts these students that I elucidated in the housing example. Uh, what I've done in the classroom is I've shown uh, teachers how to use Google Art Apps for Education, which means a lot of their curriculum is now moving from paper copies into the digital divide. And so um, this is where I started hearing a lot of anecdotes from students and a lot of quotes. Specifically, this was one I heard in a 8th uh, grade math class when the teacher assigned a digital assignment and the, student was, the students were tasked with turning in their homework at home. She said this out loud to the teacher, I can't continue this work, I don't have internet in the home. And so this really geared my inquiry question into what resources we can find, whether or not we can expand existing free Wi-Fi hotspots so that students could um, do their homework and extend their learning and turn in their work outside of school. And so I started this process by giving a student survey data in 18 classes to 7th and 8th grade students and ended up uh, surveying 229 students across this um, grouping. And from the data, I actually was a little shocked because what it says is only about 4% don't have internet in the household. I thought it was going to be a lot larger. And so this, 4% is, is not that large. But if we're tasked with educating 100% of our students, we have to give that 4% the chance to do this work at home. Now, the second question that I asked was, if you are going to go into the public and you are going to get free Wi-Fi, where are you going? And for the majority, it's they're going to the library, which is very close to Ben Franklin. It's about three blocks away. They're also going to uh, fast food restaurants, their friends and family members' houses in the mall. I'm going to come back to the library in a bit because there's an ancillary thing I learned about this afterwards. 
The last question, I only asked three questions on the survey and they're very pointed, was, do you have a computer at home? And this results really changed my inquiry perspective. So they may have internet at home, but there's a 10%, which is up from 4% in internet in the house, where they don't even have computers in the household. So this really changed my inquiry process. It was less about, well it still was, figuring out free Wi-Fi in the community, but it was also adding a question, is how do we get cheap computers into these households so that students can utilize the internet that they have? And so it was from this moment that I started gathering resources. And I started with my initial question. The initial question revolved around free internet. Excuse me, that was it. 